Hi, I'm Rob Capron, and you're watching the Permanent Rain Press. Hi, everyone. It's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press, and today I am happy to be joined by Rob Capron. How are you? Great. How about you? Thanks for having me on. I am so excited to, to be rehashing the past with you, but we will also talk about the present and the future. So let's get started. It's been 10 years since the release of Diary of a Wimpy Kid. No. You starred as Rally Jefferson in films no. one through three. If you had to pick one, what was your favorite scene to be a part of? Oh God, you're starting with the whammy. Okay. Um, hmm. Out of the whole trilogy we're talking? Okay. Favorite scene? Uh, I really, really liked filming. Um, I really liked filming the party scene at Roderick's house. That was a lot of fun. Um, just because for 12 year old me, I've never been in any sort of environment like that. One thing about me playing Rowley was that there were a lot of situations that like I'd have to act out in those movies that was like not that hard for me to be acting out because I probably would have reacted very similarly. Um, that party is definitely one of them. Uh, I love that scene. In that same movie, um, there's another bit where um, Greg and Rowley are trapped in the back of Roderick's van. And like they're just kind of getting thrown around all over the place filming that was so fun because they did it on this machine called them um, a gimbal where like they basically had like the outside of the van but it was like elevated like 10 feet in the air or something they put us in there and then it's it's almost like a like a, one of those like uh remote controlled like bulls like rodeo like fake rodeo kind of things it's just throwing you all over the place like it was so much fun doing that um probably between those two i had a lot of fun on that uh anything involving like some almost sort of stunt is the coolest thing ever for a kid so I feel like I have to default to that one but did you get any motion sickness during during that car ride no I definitely got motion sickness when we were filming the uh the, the ride in Wimpy Kid 3 when they're on the um it's supposed to be the cranium shaker yeah but uh especially at the time I was terrible with roller coasters um and I did not want to go on that at all and like, I, I just remember that day I was like, all right, I got this. I was like hyping myself up in the morning. And then we ended up getting there and it's like 160 feet in the air, right? It just spins like this. And while it's spinning, the cart thing that you're in is also spinning. And I just remember walking up to it and I was like, I can't do this. But they strapped us in. They, they made a very poor decision of having us record all of our dialogue before the ride started before we actually went on the ride so that just built the suspense we're like at the top like 160 feet up sitting there like looking down and then the director they've taped a walkie talkie to the side of the cart uh the director goes okay we're gonna we're gonna start now and i just looked at zach and he looked at me and we both just started crying <laughs> oh yeah. did you film that out at was it playland in in vancouver yeah it was um uh the the peony in vancouver so yeah, yeah maybe playland yeah 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 um i just remember they would have like that big fair uh and I you guys that. have to go back fun. one day then well to. yeah obviously playland's not happening uh right now it didn't happen really yeah. happened i think they actually did it last summer but limited oh, really? capacity so you know one day you guys will just have to come back and relive that experience no no i i at some point in my life i have to make a trip back to vancouver like there's so many good memories there like i wouldn't even know where to begin i, I missed a lot um there we were actually thinking about doing um like a 10 year sort of reunion trip. Jeff Kinney was talking about that a bit, but then COVID happened and it was just all like, uh, yeah, oh. kind of a bummer, but maybe we'll end up doing that at some point just for the, the heck of it. We'll see. Yeah. It's only shelf temporarily, I'm sure. Um, we're going to talk about a scene that was one of my personal favorites because I want you to expand a bit on it. And that was yeah. when Rowley confronts Greg in the hallways. He says, you're not my friend. Don't yep. call me. Don't yep. come by my house. Because yep. for all the comedy, that was a pretty emotional scene. So do you remember filming that? Was it tough to stay in character? I, I, I really do remember filming that. Seeing how that scene has evolved, like for other people, has been so funny to me. Because the type of thing where like, when, I remember when I was doing it like on set, everybody was like, oh, like this is so sad. Like I, everybody was getting like kind of worked up about it. And then when I was in high school, it was very much just something my friends used to taunt me endlessly. 
like it'd be the type of thing where like one of my friends would be like hey rob can i like copy your homework or like your hair like yeah like yeah but i mean i don't know like i i don't know you, you got caught last time i don't like get in trouble or something like that and then my friends would just be like don't call me don't come by my house we're done and so at first it'd just be like it, it was very much like uh my friends just messing with me kind of thing but to see like people latch on to that on like TikTok and stuff and just see it but just be like a thing that everybody's running with and like it's really really funny because it was it used to just be kind of like an inside joke for me and like my immediate circle but apparently it resonated with a lot of other people which is uh really really cool to see just in general um yeah but I mean I I love I still I can't help but laugh whenever I hear that like I know it's a serious scene but like I just can't take it seriously at all anymore um but yeah no no i remember that that was uh it was definitely one of the uh days i felt a bit more pressure as an actor as well you know because like it's the big moment in the movie where for a while their friendship's done uh but yeah it was really a climactic climactic moment yeah like, i think you yeah. did it really well um <laughs> the roderick scene i wanted to talk about was you lunging at devin's feet and he says like get off me baby hippo you'll always yeah. have those memories yep I know you, you you do. Um, the funny thing is, is that uh, again, my my high school friends just really love to roast me because of those movies. Um, I used to play a lot of uh, video games with them, and one of my friends actually made their username uh on on PlayStation because we'd all play on that. He made his username Baby Hippo Twenty Four in a very direct reference to that quote. So it's yeah, it just it keeps coming back, you know. It's that stuff sometimes you just can't uh forget certain lines. That always makes me laugh. You've really embraced it, though. Like you mentioned, TikTok. You're on TikTok. You had yeah. done um, a few different ones referencing your time as yeah. Rowley. So were those fun to record? Did, how yeah, did you come I mean, up with those ideas? Yeah, I mean, you, you got to have fun with it, you know? Like, you, I, like, my favorite thing, honestly, about having done all of those movies and, like, just playing Rowley has been, like, especially even though it has been only 10, even though it's been like 10 years, seeing people react as strongly in the way that they are and like interacting with it in the way that they are. It's really cool. Um, and, and I don't know what to do with it half the time, you know, like it really just makes me happy that people still have these sort of like, you know, like visceral reactions to like the certain line or a certain whatever. Um, but yeah, like in terms of me making stuff, like I just, you gotta have fun with it. And, and I like to give it as my way of being like, yes, I see a lot of what you guys are doing and this is really fun and I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I wanna make some more TikTok videos just because it's, uh, it, it's awesome to see what other people make or just kinda, you know, I, I like messing around with Zach on that once in a while. Um, we had a lot of fun doing that over the past couple of months. But yeah, in terms of coming up with ideas for it, I, I, honestly, I get a lot of cues from what I'm seeing other people do in terms of like reacting uh, to different wiki related things, like certain questions people might have or something like that. Um, I just love uh, seeing what other people have to say. Like I get the best messages from people um on social media like sometimes i get the really funny kind of specifically weird ones and sometimes it's just like happy birthday like it, just seeing the fan out but it really means a lot to me kind of across the board that's awesome because like i was going to mention the fandom for these books and particularly those three movies is still going so strong um have you been seeing a lot of the fan art and fan edits that people have been doing it's i will never get over uh the seeing stuff like that because it, it's so weird for me like like the fact that somebody took the time to do all of that work be it like a sort of like video edit type of thing oh the best are when they have like rowley videos where they've just got some like pop song in the background and the camera's like spitting all over the place and it's like bedazzled whatever and it's just like oh my god like people are the best uh the best fan video i've ever uh had the chance to um sort of like interact with i guess would be um, one time I was visiting um, a kids filmmaking camp in Rhode Island uh, to just like talk to a bunch of different groups and stuff. Um, and I, you know, I talked to like two or three and then I was going to another one and the person who was running the camp said like, oh, um, you're really gonna like this group. And I was like, why? And they were like, they call themselves the RCFC. And I said, well, what's that? And then I show up and all these kids have printed out pictures of my face, cut them out and taped them onto their own faces. 
And I'm just looking around like, what is happening here? And then the instructor's like, this is the RCFC, the Robert Capron fan club. And the whole movie they were making was about different versions of me fighting to see who the ultimate Robert Capron was. And I was just sitting there, like, looking at this while all these, like, eight-year-olds are, like, running around, like, oh, my God, it's you. Like, we love you. I was like, this is, this is a cult. I don't know what to do with this. Like, this is insane. I should not have this much power in the world, like, at all. But it was really sweet because they ended up having me uh, – film um the ending of the movie in which one of the robert caprons finally wins and then turns into me like they become the robert capron so they had me just like walk out of a building and go like yeah into the sky like it was really really that's funny. actually really innovative for for young children like you were the king of that of the the fan club of the camp and i'm sure it's such a winning experience that that they'll take with i them. know it was kind of insane and then they end up making this whole movie in which like they morph into like their god form which is me like i did not know what to do with that at all is there <laughs> footage of this somewhere no that's it they tried um they tried sending it to me but the link wouldn't work and then i ended up getting back to i just never got a hold of it i'm still bummed about that i gotta i gotta go like back through my email and see if maybe yeah I dig through the it. archives it yeah has it's to gotta be, be there somewhere exactly it's gotta be buried somewhere i i definitely need that but uh no, that was definitely probably the best direct uh, fan experience I've had. When you're having a bad day, that's always something that, that you can really that's draw from. That's very true. That's very true. No matter what, I have the RCFC on my side. We got a lot of, yeah. So you talked a lot about uh, your friends. Uh, how about your your family? Because your mom, Kay, uh, you two have a moment forever. In the first movie, uh, for those who don't know, she played Rowley's mom in the mother-son dance scene. Yeah. So is that video, is that part ever played at, at family gatherings for a little bit of entertainment? Anytime I was at any sort of um, public event, if that song, that song didn't really come on in a lot of like middle school, high school stuff, uh, Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys. But anytime I was at any sort of event, um, sometimes my friends would request it specifically. And the DJ would be like, why the heck does this like 12 year old kid want to listen to a Beastie Boys song, but okay. And then they put it on and everybody in the room would just look at me and be like, Rob, Rob, do it, do the thing. Um, my mom has told me frequently she wants to do that dance at my wedding. I've said no a thousand times. I draw, I have some standards. That is definitely, nope, that is one of them. Uh, but yeah, people ask me to do that all the time in, in some sort of different context. With TikTok, it's even worse. Not the app, the song with Kesha. Like that is a whole other thing. Anytime, imagine being in a middle school dance, right? And like you kind of have a crush on somebody, you maybe want to talk to her, but before you get the chance to actually talk to her, TikTok by Kesha comes on and all of a sudden everybody's looking at you going like, do the thing, do the thing, you know, when you have the underwear on your head. And you just like it's like oh, it's <laughs> these songs will just be like forever burned into the back of your mind. No, anytime TikTok comes on anywhere, be it like like there were sometimes like I'd be in college right, and like I would just like walk into uh, like a like like I don't know anytime I'd be in college and I was at a party or something that song would come on I would just tense up like immediately I'd just be like because I think like does someone know and if someone knows like, trigger warning. Say, and then, and then everyone's gonna know, and then everyone's gonna make me want to do it, but I don't even remember it, so I can't do it. And then I just like, there's a couple of seconds of like, it's almost like fight or flight, you know? It's like you either have to attempt it or just like see if anybody reacts, or it's it's funny. Has it been relatively smooth though, like after after kind of middle school, high school? Um, oh yeah, 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 definitely. No, th things have been like. Uh, this was really great. Um, I'm glad I made the sort of call to like go to college because there was a while where I was thinking to myself, like maybe I could just move out to LA and like now I have, but like just kind of skip college entirely and do that. But uh, for various reasons, I just decided I, I wanted to take that time to do that. I'm really glad I did. Um, it's definitely helped me a lot in terms of thinking about what I want to talk about as a writer, the type of stuff that I want to act in, the type of stuff I want to make, how to contribute to those things. Like even just different sort of like research processes with like writing and stuff. It's been, um, it's been very helpful and really just like grounded me in a way that I think is going to uh, help me in my career to come, you know? Um, but no, things have been, things have been pretty smooth. It's just funny to see like a different age range is uh, how people react to Wimpy Kid. But, and yeah, like we were talking about earlier, seeing how people react so intensely, even now still kind of blows my mind a little bit. 
like uh oh everybody everybody always asks about Roderick it's so funny like everybody's always like oh my god I loved Roderick when I was a kid like people yeah it, it's it's funny let's talk about your relationship with with Dev um particularly Devin and yeah. Zach because I know you're so close with them so to still be keeping in touch after all these years what has that meant to you it's really um it's really telling uh in a way I don't know if that's the best way of putting it but like something I love about having friends friends like them for that long it's the type of thing where like I mean I've had plenty of like childhood friends I still keep in touch with and whatnot but to have like to go through and experience that just insane at like 10 or 11 or 12 which is kind of when I was starting getting involved with those um with other people and then being able to sort of like fall back onto them. there's a certain bond that like comes through doing something like that together for that amount of time that's just very unique in this world and, that, and there's something that i value a lot and it's something i appreciate a lot and uh, devin has very much uh served as an older brother figure for me as well in a couple of different ways um which has been wonderful especially over the last sort of like two years when i was um because I'm from Rhode Island, like when I went to middle school, high school, I even went to college in Rhode Island because Brown was in Rhode Island. So I was there for a while. But um, uh, it, it wasn't really until like two years ago that I really, really reconnected with Devin and Zach, mostly because I kind of, you know, they're out here. I was out there. Like I would check in with them for sure. But it was just one of those things where like, you know, everybody's kind of doing their own thing. Um, everybody like has their own life to live and stuff to figure out, especially with me being in school, I was doing like very specific pathway stuff, but it's wonderful to have those friendships that you can kind of just always count on. And, and, and like I was saying, there's just a certain connection that comes with like, you know, going through all this like publicity stuff, going through just like the process of filming and just the time like onset and offset and the bonding that comes with that. And you're aware the whole time you're making a movie like that, how unique of an experience it is, you know? Like, especially at that age, with could being like something, it's honestly, as I've gotten older, it's become more surreal for me in the sense that I was lucky enough to have an experience like that at that age. And like, I really, really value that. And I'm trying, I'm trying to carry it like forward with me through everything I do. Like, I, I know I was lucky to do that and I want to pay that forward somehow. I love that. That was so well said. And obviously the longevity of, of these friendships that will carry on for a while, I'm sure. Now, has the cast seriously talked, you know, outside of a 10 year reunion about reprising your roles for, you know, some kind of skit or a short, like not necessarily a full length film, but has this yeah. ever come up? No, no, it's just, it's funny you say that because it has definitely come up. Um, and it's the type of thing where like, uh, a lot of people, including my aunt, my aunt has come up to me at like every single family gathering we've ever had. Be like, you got to do a Wimpy the Kid movie, but but put it in college. And I'm like, well, first off, it's Diary of a Wimpy Kid, not Wimpy the Kid. His, it's not like Winnie the Pooh. Like, he's not Wimpy the Kid. But <laughs> second of all, like, yeah, a lot of people have come up to me and been like, oh, you should do some sort of like college age one. And I was like, ah, like, I don't know. I don't know how that would work. You know, like, I think... Um, Je Jeff Kinney very much approaches the Wimpy Kid universe in the same way that like Charles Schultz might have approached like Peanuts in the sense of like they stay a certain age. It's kind of just continuous sort of adventures within that world at that age. It's not really like Harry Potter where it sort of like evolves. And I get that. Um, and no, that made complete sense. Like I after we did Wimpy Kid 3, like when I was like 14 or 15, like I lost a lot of weight. I looked very different. So it's the type of thing where, uh, you know, if we were to do another one, we'd have to kind of just roll with that for Rowley as a character or something like that. But no, I mean, I would, if, if there was a scenario in which like, I I felt like the, the the story was good and like I actually really wanted to like dive into something like that then yeah I would absolutely do it and I wouldn't be opposed to doing like a random skit or something I mean I'm making TikToks where I'm totally just like referencing it you know like that's very much but uh yeah I don't know it's kind of a never say never sort of thing I just think um realistically like we all look and sound a lot different and so it's just one of those things I um, honestly feel though like you everyone could get together and fans would have crowdfund a project like this That'd be like you know not just insane. not just yeah. seeing the Hefleys and rally but um i don't know chirag 
Patty, Holly, Fregley. We would love to see them all. I would honestly be really interested to see what an older take on Fregley would be because there's so many different directions you could go with that. <laughs> like, you know, we won't get into some of those challenge in the writers far, room. far <laughs> directions, but there yeah. could, you're right. There could be many. <laughs> There's a lot of different ways you could take like Fregley as a 20 something, which would be, yeah, I would be really curious to see somebody take a, take a dive into that. But um, no, I mean, I don't know. Like it, it, again, it's always wonderful and kind of staggering just to see how people react to those movies and us and that material. Like it's really, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. And never say never is kind of how I'm looking at it, but yeah. Who knows? So before we move on from the Wimpy Kid chapter, we'll, we'll dive a bit more into to your studies at college, but we're going to do a throwback trivia. So what I did is I watched some interviews you did when you were doing press for Wimpy Kid or Frank and Weenie. Wow. So we're going to see how well you remember, you know, 10, 11 year old Rob's thoughts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You did your research. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see what you got. Okay, back in 2010, your favorite book series were what? Okay. Um, I feel like I was that kid who would default to Harry Potter, or maybe I would have said Percy Jackson. I feel like it was either or. Is it neither of those? It, it, What's your final answer? Final answer. Uh, I was reading Percy Jackson at the time, so I don't know. I, I'm going to go with Percy Jackson, but I might have said Harry Potter. We would give you a 0.5 because you actually said, oh, it was a tie. It was a tie between. That's the most 10 year old me crap I've ever heard. Of course I said that. Oh, it's a tie. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, 0.5. Looking at a cutout of Rowley, this is during some kind of press junket for Wimpy Kid. So it was a cutout of him, you know, how he's drawn in the comic books. What were your initial thoughts upon being cast as him? Oh, that's a, that's a good one. I have absolutely no idea what I would have said to that as an 11. Um, okay. My initial thoughts. Oh, I probably made some joke about like, am I going to need buck teeth? How are they going to do that? Did I actually? Yes. Okay. You said oh my weird. God. And then you said, so I could pass off as a guy with buck teeth. So I'll give you that point. That was pretty good. Oh my God. Wow. That's, uh Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just experiencing cringe for 11 year old me. Anyway, yeah. Okay, uh, moving on. What did you bond with Grayson Russell over during filming of Roderick Rule? <sighs> Probably Lord of the Rings. That right? was pretty, yeah. yes. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if that was Roderick Rules. I didn't realize that was second movie. I always thought that was first for some reason. But yeah, no, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, he showed me all the extended editions. And it was like, oh, we watched it like night after night after night. It was like 12 hours. Like, oh, it was intense. Good, but intense. Yeah. I think during that same interview, you were talking about um, watching a bunch of uh, horror movies or ones that your mom won't be happy. And you said, I was very mature for my age. You said that. Yeah. That sounds about right. Um, yeah, but no, my dad showed me so many movies I probably should not have watched at the time. I was pretty mature though, I will say. But um, no, yeah, I saw I saw like The Exorcist when I was eleven, and that is a very intense movie. Um, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very intense. But no, even in the twenties, I think it's intense. So I mean, for you to handle that back then, you must be like, are you a horror fanatic now? I don't know about fanatic. I definitely love horror movies. Like I'll always have a, I'll always have soft spot for them. Um, I love going to see horror movies in theaters. Like I, I miss going to theaters, and I miss going to see horror movies in theaters in particular. Because one of my favorite things uh, growing up was my dad would take a bunch of my high school friends and I to like uh, before we could drive or like middle school. He'd take us all to uh, the the movies that we see, like all the paranormal activities and like Insidious and stuff like that. So I always got a soft spot for stuff like that. But Exorcist is a whole other class. I'm like ugh. Okay, question four. What do you like about the world of Frank and Weenie? What did I like about it? Uh, I mean, I, I know I like that it's black and white. I know that I like it. I probably said something about it being stop motion. Maybe. No. 
You could have. I I only took like one interview. So if okay. you did, yeah, it, it has something to do with the people. Oh, oh, yeah. Like I mean, like I probably would have said something. I I mean, it's a fantastic cast. So in that case, I might have said something about like how awesome it was just working with that cast in general. Because especially now, like I realized so really, really, really cool people were in that movie. Um, and Tim Burton as a director is, you know, he's like he's one of the old timers. You gotta love Tim Burton. Um, but yeah, I probably said something then about how much I just like respected the people I was working with and just how awesome being involved in something like that was. I'm sure you would have said that. <laughs> this Whoa. is one of the characters. Um, so it's okay. a, this is a direct quote. Everything looks kind of creepy and weird, even the normal people. <laughs> yeah, even the normal people. Oh, wow. The, 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 it's, it, it's the particular phrasing that's getting me with these, you know? Like that is, ugh. Ugh, even the, yeah, okay. Okay, to end things <laughs> off. Number five, what do you think audiences are going to take away from Frank and Weenie? I loved this answer. I am assuming I said some super inspirational stuff about how love lasts forever, even when like, or something to that effect because of the dog, right? Maybe. It's along those, those lines, yep. Along those lines, yeah. Like certain bonds can't be broken. I don't think I was articulate enough to say that. Uh... Oh God, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up going with uh, yeah something about like you know, love is strong. I would give you a half. I'll give you a half point for that. I think audiences are going to realize how much they care about their pets and how important they are to them. <laughs> what a what a what a game changer of an answer that was, eleven year old me. That's uh, that's impressive. And hey, now you have your dog, right? So yeah, yeah. It, I was changed. You're right. It worked. It was Frank and Weenie. It was that yep, experience. Frank and Weenie, yeah. Actually, um, right before we decided to get a dog out here, my I, I'm not even joking. My roommate said, "Hey, we should watch Frank and Weenie." We did, and then a couple days later, he was like, "I think that made me want to get a dog." So that movie actually that that's actually a very accurate quote. No, I wow. think. It, yeah, I didn't even think of that. That's insane. So we'll move on now. We won't put you through through, through, through the, the cringe the any longer. But tell me about your studies at Brown. You, I think you said modern culture, media, history. Yeah. So what kind of, what was your major and what did you kind of take away into your script writing now? Yeah, no. So I, um, so I double majored. Um, I did modern culture and media, which is Brown's really name for the, the film department. Uh, and uh, I did history. Um, and I loved both of them. Um, for kind of similar reasons, actually. Like, obviously, like, I've been into filmmaking since I was, like, eight, which is when I first started out, like, acting and whatnot. Um, but I wanted to learn more about the production side of things. I wanted to try kind of writing my own stuff. I wanted to try making my own shorts and helping other people make things and kind of just, you know, generally getting a better sense of that type of, th that side of things. Um, quick tangent, but when I was a senior in high school, we had to do a senior project. Um, and I, I was a very stupid 17 year old who decided in the course of my senior year of high school, I was not only going to write an 110 page screenplay, but I was going to film the entire thing. I was going to make this whole movie. I made it two days into filming before I just gave up. Um, because I realized I was, I'd been really stubborn about it. I had not gone into it with the right uh, structure. I just kind of thought I've been on a film set. I know what needs to be there. I did not put enough work into like, sh there's so much more that needs to go into it between like shot listing and like sat like making sure you're paying attention to the equipment, like sound equipment, camera equipment, lighting. There's just so many different variables. But I was just kind of like, oh, I've been on a film set, so I know what I'm doing. And uh, cut to like the second day of filming and my friends that I've kind of, drafted to help me film this thing are taking stuffed animals throwing them into the ceiling fan and giggling while I'm asking them to move the camera and so I learned a very important lesson that day from a filmmaking perspective which is don't always cast your friends or give them roles on things because they got to be good at what they do nepotism only goes so far um but that experience really taught me that like I needed to put the time into it and I wanted to you know get a more sort of like foundational education based off that and I wanted to take some time like experiment and that type of thing what I loved about Brown though was that Brown is an incredibly unique school 
in that it allows you to kind of essentially take whatever you want. Like once you pick a major, you have to commit to that major. You have to take, you know, the requisite amount of classes. But outside of that, you could do whatever. I could take a class on cooking in the 1600s and I could become an expert on like a bunch of popular dishes of the 1600s. Is that relevant to my current life? Not really. Is it fun? Yeah. And so Brown was filled with like a lot of different little classes like that that kind of allowed you to do your own thing. And I always just really loved history because um, I... I just love stories. And what I love the most about history is that history is ultimately kind of everybody just debating what the best possible uh, way of telling our story, both in paying attention to um, every single thing that happened, not forgetting certain stories, not undervaluing or misrepresenting certain facets of those stories. But yeah, just kind of assembling like the big master narrative of like, this is what we did. Uh, this is what we should very much not do. And like, things related to that. Um, so I've always loved history because of that. And I ended up just deciding to double because um, I just thought I'd get a lot out of that. And I wanted to learn more about a lot of other random places. And I did. It was it was nice. I was very happy with my entire experience there. That's awesome. Because like you mentioned the word grounded before, but you know, I'm guessing your academics was always something that was important to you pursuing a degree. Yeah, well, I, I yeah, like in terms of the actual sort of like pursuit of a degree, I almost felt like for me, it was more about, uh, for me, it was almost more about just like doing my due diligence in terms of learning about different things, if that makes sense. Like, I think it came less from the sort of uh, net effect of like, okay, I have this degree in this, though, of course, that's an awesome thing to have. And I very much value that by no means am I saying upon getting my degree in the mail, I burned it. No. Um, but I, I think what I'm trying to say is that one thing that I found about high school and particularly college is that I almost felt like I got more or an equal amount of things out of it in a social context than I did out of an academic one. Because, um, it's funny because despite like, you know, my film career and everything, I, my parents did, a, my parents were the complete opposite of what you hear about with most child actors' parents. And they were, they were so good to me. Like they really were. That's something I think about a lot as I've gotten older. Um, but I have found, um, like, like sort of having said that, that like it, it wasn't really until I got to college that I just got to learn about so many different perspectives on so many different things. Like um, Brown is like a very like international heavy school. And it was just incredible to get to meet all these different people from all these different places. And to really find that like, you know, there's so many more perspectives in this world than like small town Rhode Island and like filming in Vancouver, you know? Um, so that, that part of it was really important to me as well. So you did have a background in theater. Is mm. that something you would like to revisit in the future? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I actually, um, in a weird way, uh, I sometimes find that I almost have a slight preference for acting in a theater as opposed to acting on a movie set. And I think a big part of that is because when you're acting in movies and television, it's 95, if not 99% of the time, not shot in chronological order. Um, you're jumping around. In the same day of filming, you can have uh, the, a scene from the beginning of the movie and a scene from the ending of the movie, which is really like challenging in a fun way for an actor in the sense of like those normally, if, you've, if you're in a good movie, those are two completely different people pretty much. Like something has changed. There's been an arc there. Um, what I really like about theater is that you're kind of forced to undergo the entire course of the arc in one straight shot every night they're the continuous thing. And there's these awesome little like flare ups that happen where I might do one scene on a Wednesday night completely differently than I did it on a Monday night. And it has the same sort of like emotional undercurrent, but the way it is performed, the way it kind of comes out, the way certain words or phrases are accentuated over others, the way like the energy is just kind of carries is different. And I think that is so cool. I think that is one of the coolest things in the world. And the fact that it only happens in that one sort of moment, you know, it's that spontaneous, like that night, that experience, you know, it, it can't be replicated. Whereas films, the whole point of movie making is to capture it, to, to, to put it in this box for the frame or whatever. And to kind of just like, you know, preserve it that way, pick a version of it and that's that. 
Um, so I think both very much have their strengths uh, and I will always love both. But from an acting perspective, I find myself almost more drawn to just the, the kind of randomness that can come out of being in a theatrical production. It's kind of nice, as you mentioned, to to live through that progression because you get to see it from from start to finish. Yeah, yeah, you, you get to you get to feel it from start to finish in a way that is always really um, it, it's it's really profound. Like because if if you're in a movie that is ideally well written, a lot of specific scenes will provide a similar sort of function to you, right? Because like. If, if you're doing a good job, I don't think you should go into a scene, though it's a much slighter change, obviously, from the beginning of a movie to an end of a movie. I don't think you should have to go into a scene and find yourself, like, um, not slightly different by the end of it. Or, like, there being a different sort of emotional flair at the end of it or something like that. Um, theater just kind of forces you to do that by default um, in a way that I, I, I really love. So now that you are in California, do you have any upcoming projects you'd like to share? What have you been working on? Yeah, so kind of like I've been alluding to a bit, um, I found myself really drawn into the writing side of things lately. And so I've been working on like three or four different scripts with a couple different writing partners or just independently, which has been really nice. Um, and I'm really looking forward to like, you know, cleaning those up a little bit and hopefully doing something with those. Um, in the meantime, it's really frustrating right now to do a lot of things because of COVID. Um, there are a lot of productions going on right now and I have been working on a couple different things like short films and whatnot, but there's just a lot of logistical headaches. Um, and, but people are kind of finding a way. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the day when I can just like pick up a camera and make something random on a weekend with some of my friends. Um, because like, Aside from like, you know, me being with my roommates, California has been struggling with COVID for a while now. So I'm not really going out of my way to run around and, uh, you know, but um, yeah, I, I'm working on a couple different writing projects. I'm acting in a couple different shorts. They're making stuff myself, kind of trying to just keep busy with that. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I'm just excited to actually be out here finally. Yeah. How have you been liking the West Coast as compared to the East? It's, uh, the, the weather is, the weather's insane. It, it, it's, I'm still, still, still getting used to that. Um, I mean, back home in Rhode Island, they had like two feet of snow on the ground, I want to say like a week ago. And it's just like in the high 70s in Los Angeles. And I'm just going for a walk outside and I'm like, this is February. This is so weird. This is not. Is this, this is July? Is it summer. August? Yeah, no, I know. It's kind of, yeah. I, I do feel like here, you, people, I feel like here I would have had a much more profound sense of sort of like COVID purgatory than I did at home. Because at home, at least there's like some weather changes where it's here. It's like, it is kind of perpetually sunny to the point where it's a little like, okay, if I can't do anything, like I, I have really lost track of time sometimes. Like every once in a while, like it'll be a Thursday and I'll be like, all right, happy Monday. And I'm like, wait, no, no, that's not, no. <laughs> I don't know what day it is. <laughs> I think you need a calendar, your phone to, to remind yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, maybe a bit more attention to that would be helpful, but let's see. I'll, I'll make a mental note to myself to work on that. We have a wild card question for you. Ooh, Can okay. you name all of the members of the Fellowship of the Ring? Oh my God. Okay. Uh, Frodo, Sam, Gimli, Legolas, Aragorn, Gandalf, Mary Pippin. There's Sean Bean's character and I'm, I don't know his name. I cannot think of it, but I know it's Sean Bean and I know he's got that really tragic scene. I think it begins with an E maybe. Um, Oh my God, I'm so proud of myself. I was like, I'm about to drop the mic on this. I just can't, oh, I don't Do know. Do you want the first letter? Yes. B. Oh, it's B. Boromir? No, that's someone else. Is it Boromir? No. But I'm going to go with Boromir. That sounds right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I, okay. I was wondering because you mentioned you watched it years ago at the first yeah. time with with Grayson. No, and I, I'm like, have you seen it recently? But you have no, pretty good I, memory. 
Yeah, no, I, I figured uh, I, I figured you were tying back to that. I haven't I haven't watched in a while. I've seen like little clips here and there on like YouTube, but the first movie in particular, I haven't. Those are long movies, but they're, they're so good. I, I would they're recommend great. rewatching them. They're great. No, they're they're fantastic. But yeah, um, they're great movies, super long, especially ex- the extended editions. It's oof, like four and a half hours each. But yeah, good stuff. And our signature question for you, if you could be any ice cream flavor, which would you be and why? Um, that is a good question. If I could be any ice cream flavor, that feels so much different than what's your favorite ice cream flavor, you know? Uh, shoot. I... Is it a cheap answer to say Neapolitan just because like that's kind of everything and I like the range. So I'm going to default to that. I almost said pistachio because I love pistachios, but I was like, I don't know what that means about like me if I say, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to go with Neapolitan just because I like the range. At least we feel like I got multiple talents or something. That's a good one. We always like tying back into like some kind of metaphor. So Neapolitan it is. Yes, exactly. Some kind of, yeah, that's, that's where I went. Whatever. (laughs) That's all I have for you. Thank you so much, Rob, for taking the time to chat. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no, of course. Thank you for having me on. This was actually really fun. So thank you. We'll be posting Rob's social media links below. So stay tuned for his upcoming projects. Can you close things out with, I know I said I wouldn't circle back, but Rowley's line. Oh, wait, uh, are we talking the, the big one, the three words? The three words, okay. Zooey mama.